so in this video there's going to be everything all the monsters all the items tips strategies literally everything there is to do with doors from door zero to door thousand so what he appears every 10 to 15 doors and he will rush through the room really quickly you can hide under a bed you can hide under a bed or you can hide in a cabinet to dodge his attacks or sometimes behind sub objects behind some of the secret rooms and sometimes sub rooms in those four way rooms next is squeech squeech is an entity that appears in any dark room that you see it doesn't apply to rooms that rush or ambush have broken the lights in. When you enter these dark rooms, there's a, ch there's a small chance every second that Squeech will appear. To avoid his attacks, you got to stare into his eyes and then he will squeech away into the distance. Best way to avoid this is by using a lighter or a flashlight to significantly lower the chances of Squeech spawning. The next entity on our list is Hyde. Hyde will appear if you stay in a closet or bed for too long. It speeds up quite a bit of the figure and a small amount and an incremental amount after every door you complete. He will kick you out doing 40% of your health. So if you find an entity like Ambush who keeps coming back and back, you want to go in out, in out, in out, in out. Or if Wash is coming, you should just hide a bit later. It's better to just go in and out so that Hyde doesn't attack you. And he also takes 40% of your health. Next is Jack. He is a he is a 5%, he has a 1 in 20 chance of spawning or 5% whenever you enter a closet or bed. He will kick you out immediately and block you for about two seconds. And then you can re-enter the box. He can be a real nuisance, but he's very easy to dodge and he does no damage. Next entity is Duke. He, mo he most likely appears in later doors and not usually earlier doors. He'll appear and mimic a door. The main way to identify if it's a Duke is he will be the wrong number and you should always read the numbers on your door before actually going into the next room because if Duke catches you he'll take 40% of your HP. Next entity is Timothy. He only has a 1 in 200, 1 in 200 or 0.5% chance and he'll only take 5% of your health. He barely does anything and he's basically useless. The next entity is Eyes. He will appear anywhere in a room with, I think, about a 3% percentage chance, but I could be wrong. If you ever look or st look even in the smallest amount, you'll take about you'll take about 50 to 70 health per second, and even if you lightly glance, you'll take like 15 damage. It's best to stare at a wall, but a poor trick to get by him quickly is just to look down because his hitbox won't touch you and you'll be completely safe. The next entity on this list is Void. He will only appear in games where you're not playing solo and have other players. If you ever fall behind, too far behind your people, you will get a speed boost so it's easier to come back. You will need to speed up whilst he'll grab you, take 40% of your health, and take you back. There is another entity, Glitch, but he's a safe lock error, just in case a door doesn't load. Next is Seek. He's going to be your first mini boss battle entity. He can appear anywhere between room 30 and 39. He will manifest the rooms near them and turn all the pictures to eyes and all the and areas on the walls will turn to eyes they will sh they will make the lights flicker but just ignore it it won't summon a wash or an ambush to come out and try to kill you now for the taste he'll appear in a long corridor and then he'll start chasing you you need to manually run by moving 
and then you gotta follow the guiding light. At the first bit, you want fluid. At the second bit, you will be little bits of there'll be cabinets standing up a little bit, and you gotta walk and you gotta run through those little bits. It's, um, it's best to follow the guiding light, and that will give you the most information. And then the second one is there are two different types of of these cold door ones where either the left one is the door the white one's the door or the middle one the best strategy to do for this one is to look to either the left or the white say you look on the left and the door isn't there then you want to the white because it will either be in the top bit or it will be on the white but if you do find it that way just keep running and now for the end seek bit it's going to be a bunch, bunch of fire everywhere and you gotta dodge it plus C cubs, which you gotta slowly walk around. In the first one, which is between 31 and 39, there will be five wounds, evenly split. Two of them will be the ducking unders ones, and two will be those separate door ones. And then for the 70, there'll be another one at 70 to 79. And for that one, it's only gonna be those door split ones. And it can be really hard, but with a lot of practice, you'll get it done. The next entity is pink, but because there's one at door 50 and one at door 100, and because they're so unique, I will split them up into two different sections. A door 50. So at the beginning, let me describe the figure. The figure is a big entity which is completely blind and can't see you. beginning he'll be at the left he'll go up a bit take a wide go up and then go up the stairs to the top floor i'll get on that later. and then he'll go up and look around the top floor bit and then he will walk back down and sometimes he'll go between the cat the one in front between the first and the second one in both to go by and for safe areas the area where the door is is completely safe and between those long um, bits on the white side is completely safe. And also near the door, if you go over to the door and stand forwards in front of it and go to the left, there's a little pot plant. He'll never go in that place and it's a good safe spot when trying to input the code. That's basically the best tips you need and also you need to get a piece of paper. To get this piece of paper, there'll be a little desk at the left and figure only in one of his rotations will go near it. And you need to collect that paper and each of the numbers will be like say triangle three and square two. It would be 32, but input the code on the big padlock at the top and you can free. Those bookshops up there is on the white and left, there's one bookshelf and two bookshelves facing forward way and there's a vertical line way sitting there. He will come up here and go between every single one, but I'm pretty sure the ones near the stairs are safe. And the little pot plant near the front is safe. And that's basically everything to do with door 50. And also, on the left staircase, which is blocked up, if you hide in that little corner, it's completely safe. This is figure part two at door 100. I've never gotten there yet before the Hotel Plus update, but after the Hotel Plus update, it's been really changed. And I've watched a lot of YouTubers do it, so I have a pretty good description, but it may not be 100% perfect. So at the beginning, figure will jump out and start charging at you. You need to go down these hallways and one between them and go find all the little battery bits. You need to find all ten. For the wounds, there's like a lot of long hallways which I think safe points there. But so if for, for a more experienced bit on this, you should probably watch someone else though. So there's also another room, if you go down under the stairs when he's not there, there's a little time lift, which you can store things. A lot of people like putting rare rooms items in there, 
because they're really hard and annoying to we get ever again. And after you've got all 10 beds, you'll be put in the electric room where you've got to do a puzzle. There's zero to 10 numbers, and at the top, there'll either be a light turned on or off. If it's turned off, don't flip the switch. If it's turned light, then you should flip the switch. A lot of speedrunners or an easy strategy is to flip all 10 before the things start to make it way easier for you to figure it out. And then we've completed that, he'll charge after you and you gotta turn around and then just start running up the stairs to the elevator before he catches you and destroys you. The next entity I'm gonna start talking about is more of a sub entity who doesn't appear in the game, but he's very important. So whenever you die from any entity, excluding entities that do minimal damage and can't kill you, like Snare and T and got his name, the Spider Guy, or any entity that can't kill you, they won't have death messages. But if you ever die, the Guiding Light will give you information. He also shot, he'll also make a sparkle where books are in door 50 figure. And in the seat cage um, trays, he will light up the, the doors that are correct. Just one more thing before this ending. He will give you very important death messages, explaining in a pretty good degree how to beat the entities for people who don't like watching videos. The next entity is Jeff. He isn't really an entity that does anything, but really, he runs a store at door 52 of you beat figure. And he is the most easiest way to get the crucifix and the skeleton key, which are very important in getting stuff like the wombs, badges, and other important stuff. He'll sell the flashlight for 100, and vitamins, lockpicks, and lighters for 50, and the very rare items like the skeleton key and crucifix for 250 gold he's very helpful in the game and he's where you should get your second main source of items than paying more expensively for the knobs at the beginning shop my next entity is snare he will appear between doors 90 and 98 at the end of doors in the greenhouse rooms they will be mostly dark and he can appear and it'll take i think 40 of your health but I'm not a hundred percent sure. And he can't completely kill you. He'll only do a percentage of your health. Which is kind of weird because there's no real entities that spawn there. The best way to stop him is by using a flashlight and shining around the room to see if there's any snares in front of you. The lighter will still do good, but the flashlight is much better at the job. Next entity I'd like to talk about is Ambush. He very rarely will appear in the early game and most likely spawns between doors 90 and 100. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure he's guaranteed during that time. And he becomes way more common after door 50. He is just like Wash, which I already covered. And he will smash down the walls quicker than Wash and he'll come back between two and I'm pretty sure six times. Hide will work against you though, so you want to get in and out of a bed or closet. The best things to use here are the light, the candle will use, that won't really help, but the flashing light will help a ton to help you. Mainly, you just want to get in and out, but if you can find something to hide behind to, so you don't have to go in and out, it will do much better. Now for Hulk, the last of the entities that actually do something. He used to be 3%, but after the Hotel Plus update, he's also been pushed back to between a 0.1% chance to a 0.3% chance. He'll spawn a message saying, look behind, look behind, and then he'll appear behind you going forward and backward. Usually, you just want to move back a bit, but I'm pretty sure after the revamp, I haven't got him in yet, so I can't sure. He's quicker, so you have to move backward faster and forward quicker. He can be pretty annoying and no items will really do anything to help much. It's better just learning him over practice and time and listening to his instruction. The next entity on the list is Shadow. He has a 1 in 2000 chance of appearing at any door. 
he will appear as a light flash for about zero dot z for about zero dot one seconds and then a black blur for about zero dot zero five seconds and then it'll disappear immediately sometimes he'll appear and you'll miss it because you're busy but he's really rare and it's a cool sight to see i did see him once time while trying to do something the next entity is red room jack i did already cover jack but this is a different in instance he will lightly jump scare you and then the whole room you'll be in it will be turn pretty red and the outside windows will just be pure red he doesn't he doesn't affect the gameplay in any way or form but it's pretty rare and cool when you get it next entity is el Bolino. he will appear in jeff's shop at door 52. he will talk some random messages and stuff but he really doesn't do much and most of the time you'll just end up in your pocket. last entity on my list is Bob. He'll just sit there as a waterway skeleton and he takes a very long time to talk to but he does absolutely nothing. He's very useless and barely does anything. Now we are going on to items. I will be listing every single item there is. All of them. Including the rooms items and miscellaneous items. First item is the lighter. It, this is the most common thing that you can find and the ways you can find it is you can buy it at the first shop for 50 knobs at Jeff's shop for 50 gold or has a very low has a pretty low chance of spawning in cabinets it will provide a, a small light source around you and its best uses are not really that good but can help when finding the switch and is good at creating a source of light so you don't get lost yourself and so Screech doesn't attack you. Next item is the flashlight. This is the most rarest item of the base shop items from the main shop that you can get. It costs 100 knobs at the starter shop, 100 gold at Jeff's shop. Has a extremely significantly low chance of being found in a cabinet, a a low chance of being found in those guaranteed item cabinets and its uses are it will shine it has a very long recharge time and can be recharged with battery it will shine a light onto an area and it, it really helps out a lot when finding light when trying to find the switches and it's overall good at everything it's one of the best items and maybe the best item there is indoors. Next item on my list are lockpicks. You can buy two of them at the start shop for 50 knobs, and their odds are a bit, are uh, quite low to be found in the desk pits, and about medium chance of being found in the big cabinets. And at Jeff's shop, they cost 50 gold each. Their uses, are breaking down doors without having a key and accessing the rooms. The best use for these are is if you're in a, one of those big locked rooms and it's dark. It can take a long time and be very irritating to try to get. So most of the time you just want to bust it down for a long time. Next item on the list are vitamins or vitamins. They, you can buy three of them at the starting shop for 100 knobs or you can get one at Jeff's shop for 50 gold. They will no longer give you any health and they'll give you a big, they'll increase your speed by about 1.3, I think, no, 1.4x speed for about 9 seconds. It's very good and its main purpose is can help a lot if you encounter Holt, can help a lot in Seek and Figure, and overall is a pretty good item, but it's pretty medium. Next item on my list is the candle. This item can be found put on the little wooden benches. It shines a light and it will go out whenever an entity comes, but it does drain over time. The best uses for this is for Screech, because it can be annoying and that he doesn't really want much to but for entities that don't make a big noise, he can be really handy for maybe identifying Timothy, but overall, in my opinion, it's really bad. Starting on my list is the crucifix. 
this is the whale's item to appear in the game. I don't think it can be found in the cabinet. It has a a really really it has an extremely low chance of appearing in those top cabinet and can be found on the little dot bit on the little bottom above the nurse's office. Its ability is to banish enemies. items in the game but its weakness is that it's only single use and usually you could just beat them without it. This item is the skeleton key. Just like the crucifix it can't be bought in the starter shop and it's just as well as the crucifix and the same cost as the crucifix in all that type of stuff. Its abilities is in the nurse's wound. You're able to get the mysterious green leaves just because of reasons I have to call it that. And it will heal you or if you have a spare two lock picks and you know how to do the special code you can get to the wound which we'll have a section later in this video overall it's a really good item that can help give you the herb or else it's not really that good and it's kind of not that good after you leave the hospital it's basically useless next item on my list is the shaker mini the shaker flashlight to get this item, you get it when you enter wounds, and the only way to get it in the normal doors is to get to door 220 or door foul or door A1000 and then leave. And then you'll come back with the item. To main uses is it's like a flashlight but permanent, but you gotta keep shaking it to keep it alive. Overall, it's maybe the best item in the game because it's basically a permanent flashlight. Next item on my list is the scan. This is definitely the rarest item in the game. To get this one, you got to get all the way to a 1,000 in wounds. I'll be making a sec. That'll be another section later in the video. This item allows you, I'm pretty sure, to see through walls and see objects. It's a pretty good item, but it could take averagely up to three to four hours to get. So. When you get it, you should just throw it in the whip. It's a really good item. It's a really good item, and I'd highly recommend putting it in the whip. Next item is the band-aids. They will only spawn if you're hurt, and they can only be found in the drawers. They heal you for 25 of your health, but if you're over that, then it will just heal you that amount up to max. They don't really do much, and they're a small helper item. They're not we you can't really store them so mostly they just help with squeeze right? Next item on my list are the batteries. They will only spawn if you have a normal flashlight or not a shaky flashlight. What they do is they will recharge your flashlight fuel for I'm pretty sure between 25% and 60%. They they're the only way to recharge your flashlight and they're pretty helpful but they're very helpful only if you have a flashlight though. This is going to be a short section on all the, all the items that are very specific. First is the painting. They're only used in painting rooms and they'll only help you with the painting. You just need to arrange them in the order. It's you've got to put them in the blue marking showing you what the shape is. Next is the library book. The library books are something that you can only be found in the figures place. You need to get all eight of them and then you to unlock the door. Next is the solution paper. It's what you put all your solutions on. And it's and it's the way that you can escape door 50. And the electrical key. To get the electrical key, you've got to get all 10 bits on door 100. This will allow you to open up the electrical room where you've got to do the puzzle. I already talked about that puzzle when talking about the figure. It's, it's usually just used for opening it up and that's really it. The next section of this video is going to rooms. It's a place that you can find indoors and I'll be explaining everything to do from the entities to the badges to how to even get in. So, wounds is a place inside doors where you've got to do some special requirements to get in. So, first, the requirements to enter the wounds is one skeleton key and two lock picks. To get the skeleton key, you can very well find it in places and 
Most likely you'll get it at Jeff's shop, and the lockpicks can be bought from the place found or from Jeff's shop. To actually get to the worm, it usually resides most likely on door 59 or 6. Either before or after, most likely before, but rarely after. There, I mean, rarely before and mostly after, there'll be a dark worm which you've got to go down and pull a lever. And when you pull this lever, go back, most likely go back, or go forward if rarely, to the worm. And then look behind the little, uh, look behind the closet. And there'll be a little hidden entrance, which will be unlocked now. And then you can walk through that, and then you'll be at the A0000 bit. And to get through that, you need to use two lock picks and a skeleton to key to break through. Wounds is basically like doors, but there's only three entities and a thousand rooms. This will be the bit where I explain basically everything. There's a bunch of randomly generated rooms, like a normal room, a stairs room, and an office room. That's the three main different correlations of rooms that you can get. And the three entities that was here was A60, basically what the stones for. You've got to hide and lock and dodge it. A90, which will play, they'll, well, they'll slightly appear at it will appear usually up the door and I need just like I see and he'll appear on your screen and then a stop sign will a stop will appear. You have about 0 0.8 seconds to react and literally not touch anything. Don't move anything. Any form of motion will cause you to take 90, 90 of your HP. And after two goes, or if you've already taken a HP, he will kill you and jump scare you. Yeah. And a120 basically like ambush you could, but there's no there's no hide so you can just stay in there for all the time and now for the badges there's three different badges one for entering the rooms one which resides around door 220 to 230 and will keep this pattern until you get to the a1000 which is the end and you'll get the back on track badge Entering wounds will get you the detour badge and getting to the legendary A1000, which is extremely difficult and most likely you'll break whatever device you're using when trying to get it. And you'll get the A1000. That's basically doors in a nutshell. And now I'm going to go on to talk about all the different doors and different types in doors. So now for the doors in well doors. First is the straight door, you just walk through it and it's normal. Next is the L-shaped door. This door is basically shaped like an L. Sometimes it has closet, sometimes it doesn't. Same with the carpeting. Next is the lobby door. This door appears at door zero, it's usually there. You gotta duck under a little bit, grab a key, and then you gotta walk through. The next one is what I like to call the T-shaped door. And that one, you gotta walk through the door, and then usually if it's unlocked, then there won't be any worms, but if it's locked, there will be worms. For the next one, there's the upstairs or downstairs one. Either you have to walk downstairs or you'll have to walk um, upstairs. And these doors later in the game do usually or every single time will basically design them. And the next room, I'm pretty sure, is the infirmary. This room, I think, appears around door 60. And if you have a skeleton key, you can unlock the door to come in there. Dupe will not resign here, but you can find a special herb which will help and there's a lot of there's also the painting room which will resign randomly for low chance but you got to do a painting puzzle to get it, to complete it and before there was a mini library now there's a mini library at door 49 it's a little mini one but it's pretty much really useless there's also two different basement one there's one basement where you don't have to go for the vents and another basement if i did go for the vents I'm pretty sure that this is every single door that door type that is in the game. So if I ever if I didn't list a door or made a mistake, then just tell me down in the comments. Now I'm gonna go on to the special doors for entities. Now a pulse door. Pulse is a long hallway which corrupts two long hallways and you've got to go left up down up down to complete this one. See? has manifest three different ones of duck under one, the long arms and the fire one, and also the other one and the Also figures domain, figures mini library and Jeff's store. Jeff owns a little store of El Goblino, Bob and him. You can't change the radio and he'll sell you a bunch of very important stuff and it's the best way to get the poison books and skeleton key. And that should be every single room there is indoors. Now on to tips. 
these tips that I'm about to list here will help you a ton and most of the time will help you a lot with completing doors and overall just getting it done quicker, more efficiently and the best way to physically can. Okay, so for some more common tips, if ambush is coming, go in and out, in and out of doors. But if you really want to do a pro tip, you can hide behind lamps or hide in treasure rooms. Tip two, there's look, hidden treasure rooms in doors that do not have link name. Sometimes they'll have a treasure room. It can either contain a lot of items or some gold bandages. It can maintain basically about everything and they're really good. Third tip is picking up keys. For keys, most of the time, if you ever hear a key, you don't have to search them, you just hear a glistening noise. Same with the books and also the glistening will appear for... The lights will appear for seek for the white door and hiding under some of the other stuff. Some other really cool facts that you should do, be doing are stuff like looting. You can loot a lot, but it's not the best way to get tokens. Mainly, you should just use it for getting lights and stuff. But it's mostly all for tips. But, there are a lot of other but I could list, but I don't really know anymore. Okay, so it's now the end of the video. This, thing, this took me about three hours ish, and I hope to do that. If you could like and subscribe, or if you've got any ideas for challenges or anything you want me to do, and please donate doors, slap battles, or anything, just let me know down in the comments.